Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article says the advent of absolute chaos in Narega. The article here is speaking about national mobile monitoring software application. What is this application all about? This was launched by the Minister of Rural Development back in the year 2021. What is the aim of the application? The aim is to bring more transparency in the system and also ensure proper implementation of the schemes. The app permits taking real-time attendance of workers at Mahatma Gandhi Narega worksite along with geotag photograph. How will this be implemented? It is to be deployed by the Narega mates, local women at the panchayat level who are selected and trained to monitor the Narega worksite. Now the question is, how will this process be actually working? Who are these Narega mates? When we speak about Narega mates, who are they? They are the supervisors. So they go to that particular place, they supervise that particular area. So what is the job role that is accommodated to the Narega mates? Supervise the worksite, record daily attendance in the master role, give mark out at the worksite, take measurement at the end of the day, update entries in the job coach, facilitate application for job coach and submit them to the GP, facilitate participatory identification of works in the Gram Panchayat, ensure there is no free riding within his or her group of workers, submit filled in master roles to the GRS. These are some of the works that have been accommodated to these Nare Gamets. So these people will be trained, they will be asked to take the photograph of that particular area and one once the photograph is taken, it will be uploaded on the application. The application will take the photograph and it will also make sure that the attendance of those people who are working in that particular area are taken into picture. So when we speak about Narega mates, these are nothing but the worksite supervisors and for every 100 workers, what we will have is one supervisor within this particular program. So a person working as a mate should not be a worker in the same location locality. Now, this article here currently speaks about the challenges with respect to this application. What are the challenges with respect to this application? We did discuss, it takes the attendance, it also captures that particular site, uploads it on this application and also takes the attendance of the people who are working in that particular area. But what is the issue here? The major issue is monitoring the attendance of the workers. When we consider women, the women actually work in multiple areas. They have to take care of their homes, they have to take care of their children as well and these people might be working in one or two areas so that they can take care of their family. Families. But with this attendance in picture, they have to make sure that they are present in that particular locality for a long period of time. When we speak about Narega, how does it work? There is a particular work that is assigned to the person. So this person will have to finish the work. He would be able to take the wage and push off from that particular place. But what is happening here? In spite of he completing his work, they have to stay in that particular locality because the attendance will be taken by the Narega. Narega mate. So they have to stay the entire while because the attendance would be taken. This ultimately means earlier they were able to do two to three jobs. They were also able to get the wages as well. Now even after completing the work they have to stay in that particular place because their attendance is being monitored. Narega has historically had a higher proportion of women workers 54.7% in the financial year 2021 and 22 and has been pivotal in changing working conditions for women in rural areas. They were able to manage two to three work but because they are asked to stay the whole day because the attendance is considered these people are not able to manage two to three jobs and ultimately women have become the major sufferers. The second major issue is with respect to the network issues. What are these network issues? We did discuss about the application. When we require an application you have to take the image. This will be uploaded on the portal and at the same time what you will also have is the site details in this application. But when it comes to the rural area, when we speak about the remote areas, we do not have the internet 
internet connection even if we have the internet connection they do not have the speed as well and there is patchy internet connection issues and as a result they would not be able to take up the attendance in that particular area and number of people's attendance are not marked because their attendance is not marked they would not be able to get the wages for that particular day there was also a report from the news click as well according to this particular report differently able narega workers from tamil nadu were not able to mark the attendance the narega match were not able to take it up and ultimately these are the people who have become the major sufferers their wages were not paid on time and they are the sufferers the third is in reference to the narega match as we discussed these are the supervisors when we speak about the supervisors it is expected that because they have to take the attendance and the photographs of that particular site they require the smartphones but women in the rural areas do not have the smartphones it is the men who have the smartphones so most of the women are neglected from this particular position and they are not given the supervisory roles as well even if they have the smartphones they have to be taught how this application works how is that they have to monitor the scheme and program how is that they have to take the attendance as well but in most of the cases the required training is also not given to the narega match so on one side they might not have the smartphone so it is the men who are taking the supervisory role on the other side they are supposed to have been trained with the smartphone and the application that is also not being trained this is the third major concern when we look into the pilot process or the pilot project what they witness is some errors but when you come to the actual implementation you should have addressed what these errors were in the pilot process you should have also come up with a correction mechanism as well but when it comes to the actual implementation the errors that were present in the pilot process the same is being imposed even in the actual methodism as well so the problem is those errors are not rectified those errors which are identified you didn't have a solution to these errors so there is a probability that the same errors that were present in the pilot project is also recurring in the actual implementation and as a result of all these issues because the attendance is not marked on the application no physical records are present people earlier had the paper where they used to sign and in case there were any wage issues they could have shown this physical papers now there are no physical papers as well all this is accounted on the application but the application is not working because of the internet issues because of the errors in the application as a result because they do not have the physical records their attendance is not considered they are not being paid their wages and added to it the app's performance is not meeting the expected demand and ultimately it is the people who have become the major sufferers so whenever there is a program or a technology that is to be implemented what you require is the consultation the consultation of what people who are the stakeholders who are the stakeholders it is the government it is the gram panchayat it is the people who are working in this particular area their consultation was not taken and ultimately there was blind implementation of this technological issue so basically these are the issues that have been persisted with this particular application so this application which was initially created to bring transparency in the system and also monitor the scheme effectively has failed on multiple fronts and all these issues will have to be rectified says this article so the article goes on to say that instead of coming up with this hapesa technology what we can actually go ahead is what is called as the social audit so if technology has to be brought into picture all the errors will have to be rectified and only then implemented until then what we require is the social audit so these social audits are the citizen centric institutions where they directly speak to those people and keep the accountability of the people who are implementing it what are the benefits of social audit reduction in the chances of corruption making the common people aware of their entitlements and rights increasing the effectiveness and efficiency of a particular project reporting social accounting affecting local governance promoting integrity and unity among the people addressing the grievances and implementing corrective actions so the ideal way going forward is to strengthen the social audit and these social audits have to be strengthened there needs to be a direct role given to the people 
people so even before you are implementing any of the technological upgrades ensure that the stakeholder consultation takes place and social implement social audit is implemented at the optimum level so this particular program has some issues and all these issues will have to be rectified and meanwhile what we have to do is pay these people who have been suffering because of the attendance related issues is what is this article all about now let's look into the next article this article here is speaking about one of the initiatives with respect to the police reform what is this article speaking about the article here is speaking about the all women police stations back in the year 1992 chief minister jayalalitha from the state of tamil nadu declared open the first all women police station at chennai's thousand lights police station this was managed by an inspector three sub inspectors six head constables as well as the 24 constables when we speak about all women police station it is generally perceived that all officers in this particular police station would be women yes to a larger extent it will be women but it will also have men as well but why is this opened that is because there are number of women who may not open up themselves to the grievances that they face they may have dowry issues at home they might have sexual assaults as well they might have other issues which they may not be able to open up with the men and as a result in order order to cater to all these section of women where in case they have a grievance they can speak to another woman what we have is the all women police station so the all women police station majorly will have the women but it will also have the men as well and at the same time it was opened because women have large number of issues they will be sensitive men may not be able to understand so in order to cater to the needs of the women these police stations are opened opened so that they can put out their grievances, their crime issues, harassment issues to the women officers. So there have been umpteen number of laws and these women who do not have idea about these laws are ultimately given an awareness. They are asked to go to the police station, complain about their issues so that justice can be served to these women. Now the question is, what is the significance of such a step taken by the government of respective states? Its impact is seen from more cases of crime against women and children being reported. The minute these police stations were created, what happened more number of women started reporting their cases as well more women also reported their abuses as well this resulted in more cases being investigated by the police officers in fact when you look into these police stations they also have may I help you counter as well where in case they have questions all these questions are also answered in a polite way this ultimately means that the reaction was good the women became sensitive and at the same time all their queries with respect to different laws were answered. The personnel handled serious crimes against women and children such as rape, molestation, abduction, dowry death, cruelty by husband or relatives, sexual harassment cases booked under the Indian Penal Code, the Tamil Nadu Prohibition of Women Harassment Act as well as the POXO Act. In fact, number of POXO cases were also started reporting as well and the personnel also conducted awareness campaigns in schools and colleges, educated the children to report sexual abuse or inappropriate behavior to teachers and parents or contact the police. So these were some of the measures that have been taken under this particular initiative. 30 years down the line, Tamil Nadu has two 22 all women police stations including 31 in Chennai and the model has been replicated elsewhere in the country albeit in limited numbers so because this particular model initially started off in Tamil Nadu this also became a paradigm model in number of other states as well this was also adapted in Karnataka as well this was also adapted in multiple other states as well so once this model came into picture multiple other states started adopting the number of women police personnel in the state has also increased to over 20,000 including many senior IPS officers handling sensitive assignments. So this basically meant that the women grievances, women issues were ultimately answered by all women police stations. However, there are a lot number of concerns with respect to their operations as well. What is the concern? One, we have created these police stations. What would happen? Let's say for example, you have a particular area where you would have a police station. These 
all women police stations will not be present in every area they might be present in a particular district or it can also be present in far off places as well now if a woman is suffering from the grievances there have been issues where the police stations have not taken the cases instead they have been asked to go to all women police stations as well so instead of going to the police stations which is close by they have to travel to a long distance and this becomes the major point of concern so the major concern with these police stations are the victims are asked to travel long distances to address their grievances what is happening at these police stations is that victims give their statements to women police constables women assistant sub inspectors women police sub inspectors who in turn brief their male counterparts about the case these police stations should be ideally headed by the women they should be able able to take an independent stand but here they are going to another male counterpart it is these male counterparts who are taking the ultimate decision so how is that women is empowered is another question added to it there have been instances where if it is to do with the dowry case or to do with the matrimonial dispute they are acting as the kangaroo panchayats instead of registering the case and going about with the investigation they are engaging in counseling and compromise which should not have been done apart from that we have the existing police stations these police stations are already understaffed similarly we also have the all women police stations which are also understaffed and under resourced like the conventional police station there is also a view that the concept may have outlived its purpose as women personnel now play a much larger role in all wings of the police what is the way forward as of now when we look at the all women police stations these are housed by predominantly women and at the same time in case any women has issues she goes and puts out all her grievances to the women who are present in that particular police station but we did also look at the issue as well that they have to travel long distances in order to overcome this particular issue what we have to rethink is about this very model of all women police stations because we have to make sure that the police stations that are existing right now should be sensitized to the near future what do we mean by it are we saying that in the present situation the male counterparts are not sensitive enough to understand the grievances of a female victim this also gives an impression that men in uniform are uncaring inconsiderate and insensitive and at the same time women officers are capable of dealing with only crimes related to the women so on one side we we feel that men are uncaring they are not able to understand the concerns of the women on the other side this also pushes a thought that women would be able to tackle only women related issues so going forward this whole idea of all women police stations should be diluted over a period of time instead we need to have a police station as we already have and men should be sensitized as well and at the same time we have to recruit more number of women as well so So instead of recruiting more men what we need to have is parity where more women are also recruited these women are also present in all these existing police stations and men are also sensitized about women related issues added to it whenever a women police officer is recruited by the government she should be provided all the skill set that is also provided to a man as well these women that are recruited should not be going to the computer sections counseling cells reception desk instead whatever the men do in the police stations the same will also have to be accommodated to the women as well so going forward what we have to do is to reduce the number of all women police stations but instead in the current existing police stations bring parity with the men and make sure that all tasks are assigned to these women and at the same time the men who are present in these police stations should also be sensitized as well if these people are not given that sensitive thought process the same will have to be inculcated in the near future and ultimately all the women grievances and issues will have to be sorted out in the existing procedure is what is this article all about now let's look into the next article This article says US House passes gun safety legislation. The US House of Representatives passed significant gun safety legislation for the first time in 3 decades. The House voted 234 to 193 for the bill and this will ultimately go to the President of United States of America and he gives the consent to it. This will become the legislation. Now the question is 
why is the United States of America come up with this particular legislation? What we have seen in the past few years is the rising gun violence and this has become a major menace in the United States of America. Just a month ago as well, there was a mass shooting in Texas. This was in an elementary school where as many as 21 people were killed including 19 children. In order to make sure that gun violence in United States of America is controlled, they have come up with this legislation. The US has the highest rate of deaths from using firearms among the developed nations. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 79% of the homicides in the US are gun-related killings. According to few research, in 2020, the most recent year for the complete data is available, 45,222 people died from the gun-related injuries in the United States of America. So to control this, what we have is this particular legislation being passed by the Senate and if the President gives assent to it, this will eventually become a law. The bill was also passed after the US Supreme Court ruled that Americans have a constitutional right to carry firearms in public for their own safety and self-defense. On one side, they wanted to cut down on the gun violence issues. On the other side, there was a recent Supreme Court judgment. The Supreme Court judgment went on to say that you have the United States of America's constitution. Its second amendment says that people would be able to keep and bear the arms and the Supreme Court of United States of America said that people would be able to carry the firearms. In order to make sure that this particular judgment is also taken into picture, prevent the gun violence in the near future, this particular legislation has been passed by United States of America's both the houses. What are the provisions of this particular legislation? The bipartisan bill focuses on firearms and improving medical care in the United States of America. The bill will release funds for educational institutions to expand their mental health resources as well as make schools safer. The bill seeks to ensure strict background checks for gun buyers, especially the minors. In case there are minors who are less than 21 years of age, the system will ensure that a complete background check is done. If this particular person has a criminal history, if he has mental health issues in that particular case, license and gun will not be accorded to this individual. According to the bill, this will help authorities determine whether the person has a possibly disqualifying juvenile record within three days of the license approaching the system for a licensee. Added to it, the bill also blocks sale of firearms to those who have been convicted of abusing unmarried intimate partners. What do we mean by it? It means that blocking gun sales to those who are convicted of abusing unmarried intimate partners. The bill will allow for funds to be provided to states to implement red flag laws. This basically enables all the authorities to temporarily take away or confiscate the firearms and weapons from people that are deemed dangerous. So for a particular period of time, if the state authorities feel that we have to confiscate arms from a person because for that moment momentarily this person can be dangerous, they would be able to confiscate as well. Then this law also speaks about straw purchasing as well. What is this straw purchasing? This is buying a firearm on behalf of someone else. The penalty for straw purchasing will be from 15 to 25 years of imprisonment. Everything was good but the Democrats are still not happy because they were pushing for including the assault type weapons, raising the minimum age to purchase firearms and banning high capacity magazine ammunition as well but this is not included under this legislation which is why the Democrats are not happy with this legislation. However, a step has been taken and going forward we may see more steps being taken by the Congress in United States of America. Now let's look into the next article. This article says climate change and crop failure. The article here is speaking about what is happening in the state of Kerala. As we witness climate change issues, there is increase in the temperature, there is increase in humidity. What we have is monsoon which has become very haphazard in itself where it should not have arrived, it has arrived. Where it should have arrived, it has not arrived and ultimately it is the people who have become the major sufferers. So people who have been dependent on the range are the major sufferers and they have lost their livelihood is what is this article all about. To substantiate this, the author takes into picture some of the statistics. He takes into picture the cultivation of cardamom, cultivation of cashew nut, 
paddy cultivation, pest attacks and also other related issues that are happening in Kerala. When you speak about cardamom, it happens to be a thermosensitive crop which has been impacted by the increasing temperature changes in weather patterns as well as the extreme weather conditions. Added to it, there are pest attacks as well. Because of these pest attacks, they have to start using pesticides as well and when they use pesticides, the soil fertility will also decrease and on a longer run, what you will have is the soil fertility losing it and this will impact the livelihood means and mechanisms of the farmers. The Aralam Farming Corporation Kerala Limited in Kannur, which accounts for about 90% of the rock cashew nut production in Kerala witnessed a record fall in yield. The total yield has come down to 90 tons compared to 184 tons in the previous season. Further, the increase in temperature has affected the quality of the produce. On one side, whether it is cardamom or with respect to cashew nut, one what you have is yield which is reduced. On the other side, the quality of the produce has also decreased. On paddy cultivation, heavy rainfall at the beginning of the harvest season has severely impacted the paddy cultivation. Further, heavy summer rainfall increased the frequency of bacterial leaf blight disease in paddy and has also caused severe losses to the farmers. Added to it, the author also takes into picture the other related sugarcane cultivators issue and there is heavy rainfall which is resulting in soil fertility losing. It is also turning acidic as well. Further, the topsoil is washed away and there is depletion of the organic matter. Also, the climate change and resulting shift in the cropping pattern has impacted thermosensitive other crops like cocoa, black pepper, coffee as well as tea. So it is these farmers who have been suffering because of the vagaries of the climate change is what is this article all about. Now let's look into the next article. This article says, yes, the left is back in Latin America. The entire article is not important for us. What is important is with respect to the community of Latin American and Caribbean states. This happens to be one of the intergovernmental mechanisms. So you have all the Latin American countries who are part of this intergovernmental organization. And this mechanism is for dialogue and political agreement, which includes permanently 33 countries in Latin America as well as the Caribbean. Since its launch in December 2011, the SELEC has helped to deepen respectful dialogue among all the countries in the region in areas such as social development, education, nuclear disarmament, family culture, finance, energy as well as the environment. So this happens to be an intergovernmental mechanism where they would be able to have a political consensus, make some of the important decisions for the entire Latin American countries and also cooperate on multiple integration programs. In this particular area, what we have is China, which has already made a lot of investments. One, because China is a manufacturing hub, it has been able to export commodities to the Latin American countries and at the same time there are a large-scale Chinese diaspora in the Latin American countries. So what has China done? China has invested a lot of money in this particular area. India has also not kept quiet as well. India has negotiated, discussed with all these organizations and it has actively cooperated with the community of the Latin American and the Caribbean states. In fact, they have also discussed about the democratic values, developmental aspirations and they have also discussed about the South-South cooperation when India has met the select group of countries. In order to make sure that we further enhance the relationship, we have to proactively engage with this particular alliance and at the same time, we also have to set up cultural centers in most of the Latin American countries so that the soft power of India is also taken to the next level. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. Now let's look into the main practice questions. Despite claims of bringing transparency and ensuring proper monitoring of schemes, the National Mobile Monitoring Software app is beset with challenges. Examine, has the emergence of all women police stations assisted in curbing violence against women? Critically evaluate. So please write all your answers on the comment section, peer review and do give positive feedback to your friends answers. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.